Today is August 5th, 2022, and I'm here to say that I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Today we'll be talking about, um, uh, today we'll be talking about part two of a three-part series. It was originally meant to be a two-part series. We'll be talking about Torchlight, Metamaterials, and, meta and Metamaterials, Torchlight Preferred Shares. So I wasn't sure if people uh, wanted to see this video too much or not, but so I conduct, asked in a poll, you know, would you like to, would you like to hear me talk about GameStop, uh, Metamaterials, NextBridge, or AMC and the ApeShares that recently were announced? And uh, overwhelmingly, the response is um, yes. Talk about oil and MMTLP and NextBridge. So there you go. That's why we're making it. That's why we're making this video. Thanks for your responses. We got about 103 votes. It was really good. I didn't even mention it on Twitter or anything like that. So um, I, I just put a poll up and thank you for responding. Great. Uh, also, um, w we got some comments on the poll. Um, first comment was from Eric Parak, uh, uh, Pocock. The third, he said, phenomenal videos, Tony. The last EI video was above and beyond excellent. Thanks, Ed thanks Edward. Um, that video was meant to be like a baseline video so that I can reference it from all future videos, actually, about, about Canberra Energy. It puts everything all into one video as, as, as to what I feel about Canberra Energy and where it's headed. Um, that's not to say Canberra will not find new things and the situation won't uh, change and improve. It likely will. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a good reference for now, moving forward. <laughs> Uh, Sue Marshall said, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the GME split, even if it's not a whole video. We'll be doing that. Uh, probably I'll make a whole video on that. It'll be fine. Please, anything but, but the Ape Token fundraiser scam. Okay. <laughs> Understood. And um, Ted Byrne said, another possibility. What, you know, thoughts on the current uh, BBBY squeeze. BBBY is the Bed Bath & Beyond. And um, actually, I was talking to a friend of mine about, um, about Bed Bath & Beyond the other day, and it it has been on my short list, uh, and the reason is because it's got it's very similar to GameStop in 2020. It's similar to GameStop, and I, I'm thinking around the October November 2020 timeframe. Um, at that time, Ryan Cohen had bought a bunch of GameStop, um, and Bed Bath and Beyond has about twice the revenue that GameStop has, and it has about twice the market cap. It also has a large short position. So it's it's set up in a similar way that um, you know that that bed, bed, that GameStop was set up prior to its massive run up in 2021 in January February of 2021 when it went from four dollars to basically 480 dollars. So uh, there's a large potential upside for Bed Bath and Beyond. So yeah, um, Ted Byrne also says, hey, gee, it shut up it shut up quickly today. Now at eight dollars as I write this. So I think it it could go a lot more. Again, not financial advice, not a financial advisor, uh, but um, yeah, who's to say? Who's to say? It's got very, it's on my short list. It's very, it's, it's got very good um, potential here. Okay, so uh, part three of the video, I was intending to roll part two and part three into this video, but there was just too much stuff. So I figured I would break this into two, into two videos. <laughs> part three, we'll be talking about MMTLP and NextBridge. Um, you know, what's it worth? How, you know, what will happen? Is it going to go, you know, is it going to be private, public? You know, what's the management? All that stuff, right? I mean, what's the deal? But anyway, let's get back to this video, which is about oil and um, MMAT and MMTLP and Series A preferred shares. Okay. So the price of oil. Uh, if we look at the price of oil today, it's around, uh, it's around $87.82 per barrel. Okay. Interestingly enough, the 250-day moving average is higher than the price it is today. So that has not happened very often. The 250-day moving average is about $90.09 .90 approximately, right? The, and I like the 250-day moving average because it's very close to the 260-day moving average, which is about the one-year moving average. And the one-year moving average is $89.22, and I expect that by next week, it'll, you know, that's going to be around $90 or so. So, um, so with that, uh, let's go back in time to, you know, what oil was like just a short, a short while ago. So, uh, so this is oil in, so this is a headline from, from oil in 2020, in 2020, April 21st of 2020. It says, uh, it's from CNBC. It says, anyone who thinks oil has hit, has hit a floor is playing with fire. Yes, the price can go a lot lower. 
And at that time, the price of oil was negative $37.63. Yes, negative. That means people would pay you to take oil off their hands, literally. <laughs> okay. We also see, um, uh, you know, news, uh, news stories like this. On, you know, on March 13th, just earlier th than that, uh, the president, at that time President Trump, he said, uh, you know, he's going to buy oil for the, for, the, for the strategic reserve to aid the energy industry. He says, we're going to fill it. We're going to fill the strategic reserve right to the top, saying the American taxpayer, saving the American taxpayer billions and billions of dollars and helping our oil industry. Um, and it was in that scenario, in that time frame, that we see this interesting uh, headline come out. It says, Torchlight Energy Strikes Oil and Gas at an Or Grande Test Well, February 25, 2020. Um, and that was from a test well. And, they, and uh, you know, they, they found what they, uh, based on the analysis by Mike Mullen, president and founder of, of the of Stimulation Petro, Petrophysics Consul Consulting, the Oro Grande Basin has a recoverable reserve estimate of 3.7 billion barrels of oil equivalent, the Plano, Texas-based company said. Okay, that's quite interesting. But oil wasn't worth very much around then. It was The price was plummeting. This is, um, you know, about a year earlier, they'd actually discovered the, this 3.7 billion barrels of oil in the Permian Basin. Uh, and uh, John Berta, at that time, is the CEO of Torchlight Energy. He says, uh, Torchlight Energy Resources interview with John Berta, CEO, discussing the newly published report, which indicates the potential for recoverable reserves of 3.678 billion barrels of oil from its Oro Grande project. Torchlight controls 134,000 acres in the Oro Grande Basin, which is the westernmost sub-basin of the Greater Permian Basin. So that's, that's what we were talking about back then. But um, by April 23 of 2020, right, Drowning in crude, U.S. drillers say the Trump strategic reserve plan is no lifeline. Says, okay. President Donald Trump's plan to fill the U.S. the U.S. emergency crude oil stockpile has become the centerpiece of his administration's strategy to shield drillers from a meltdown in energy demand. But company officials and industry groups say the program has been too slow and won't be enough to save them. The oil industry was about to go bankrupt, basically, is what... The news media is saying, right? So, um, as we see, as we saw, oil went to an all-time low of negative thirty-seven dollars uh, and sixty-three cents a barrel. The news is quite. Um, nobody wants to be in, in 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 the oil in the oil market at this point, right? I mean, nobody wants oil <laughs> at, this, at this time, and yet this small company called Torchlight Energy had found three point seven billion barrels. What a time to find oil when nobody wants it. So the plan was for the people and I mean, even the guys in Torchlight, I guess they, you know, they'd lost hope or something. I'm not sure, but they planned to get out of the oil business somehow. And the plan was to sell Torchlight and they came to an agreement with a, a, a newfound company called, um, called Metamaterials and Metamaterials and Torchlight signed a definitive agreement. This was by December 14th of 2020, just by the end of the year, they'd gotten together with metamaterials, they 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 saw what each you know each saw saw something in the other company. Metamaterials was a, a Canadian company, and they had a chance to get on get you know to get listed as a U.S. company to come onto the Nasdaq. Um, Torchlight you know had a way to get out of the oil business, which was oh it was uh, it was something everyone was trying to was trying to get rid of at, at that time. So they said okay they can merge, and by December four. 14th of 2020, they signed a definitive agreement to merge. And, um, and what they said is that, you know, metamaterials, which designs nanotech structures, they make literally metamaterials, right? The, uh, what metamaterial does is they deal in stuff like um, holography, uh, laser glare protection. They do things like uh, they... They create structures on the nano scale, but what that means is they make things so small that the human eye can't even see it. In this case, one of their products is considered a nano web. It makes antennas so small that they're literally invisible. Okay. The other um, one of the other things that Metamaterials was, you know had at the time was wireless sensing. They had a way to detect, uh, you know, a non-invasive way to monitor glucose in the human body, and this could help 
ton, you know, tons of people who are diabetic. Um, and um, they also have, you know, they're also in the AR fusion market, meaning prescription augmented reality smart glasses, right? So that's something that they wanted to get into, and uh, they can do that. I mentioned earlier that they had laser eye protection, that they developed some glasses for Airbus, because at that time, for some reason, people were shining lasers at, at airplanes. Uh, 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 you know, I, I can't stress how stupid that is to do, but people did, did that. So the pilots needed protection from these laser beams. So there you go. Meta Materials had developed laser eye protection. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's as far away from the oil industry as you can think of, right? That we're, you know, we're talking about, about medical applications, uh, augmented reality, uh, nanoweb, transparent antennas, right? Anten um, LIDAR for, you know, for cars, de-icing and defog and EMI shielding for cars, right? Uh, for autonomous vehicles. And, uh, you know, antennas that would be in windows for uh, 5G, you know, and also to make 5G wireless more accessible in, in urban areas, right? So that, you know, your signals would, you know, would not get lost. So that's about as far away from oil as you can get. And that's what Metamaterials does. But um, Torchlight Energy is an oil and gas company, right? So when the two merge, the concept was that they would, you know, make this, you know, they would head towards this, towards this Metamaterials company. And that's, that's where everyone wanted to be. And, uh, but interestingly enough, at the time that they announced that merger, you know, oil had recovered from its negative $37.63 a barrel. It went positive again. And in fact, it was between $40 and $50 a barrel. It was actually around $47 a barrel at the time of this agreement, right? And the 250-day moving average was about $40 a barrel. It wasn't terrible. But let's not forget that, you know, as, you know, just in April of that year, people were saying oil is going to go to... You know, you know, oil is going to be toxic. No one's going to want oil. <laughs> That's the whole thing, right? So, um, so this this brings up my, you know, part eight of my or rule number eight of my rules for investing. Listen to the media; they'll usually tell you what not to do. When oil was at negative thirty-seven dollars a barrel, <laughs> April twenty-first of twenty twenty, and they're saying. Yes, the price can go lower. That's that's when you get into oil stocks. That's when you buy oil stuff because, hey, it recovered. <laughs> when the news media tells you something to do, pay attention. It, you know, you might want to do the exact opposite. <laughs> but anyway, so Metamaterials and Torchlight Energy were getting together and they were going to form a company called Metamaterials, of course, right? And it was going to have a symbol on the NASDAQ MMAT. So it was going to be listed on a U.S. exchange, whereas the old Metamaterials was listed on the Canadian Stock Exchange. But because they had this oil and gas asset, they were also going to spin out a Series A preferred share, which is, you know, the oil and gas assets. Basically, it's a, the oil and gas assets are 49% revenue interest in about 3.2 billion barrels of oil. There's a bunch of natural gas, but I'm not counting that. But if you did count the natural gas, it's probably around 3.7. Who knows? Anyway, it's a brand new oil discovery, so there could be more, right? And it's in West, it's in West Texas, near El Paso. So it's oil that's on land. It's not like North Sea oil. It's not like oil in the Gulf of Mexico. You don't have to drill through tons of, you don't have to drill through water to get to the oil. It's not underwater, okay? You don't have to worry about oil spills in offshore oil rigs. Um, it's on land, okay? That's a big deal. Not only is it on land, it's, it's, it's near, it's in Texas, right? It's in the United States, which is a stable government. Not only is it in the United States, which is a stable gov which is a stable government, it's near El Paso, Texas. Why is El Paso important? Because in El Paso, there's actually an oil refinery there. They wouldn't have to, you know, transport the oil very far to get it to a refinery. Jeez, what more could you ask? So anyway, <clears throat> so at at so the t the plan is that you know you got this oil and it's brilliant. A fabulous spot to have it, right? West Texas, near El Paso. It's a brand new oil discovery. There could be a whole lot more. And it's a Series A preferred share. And um, and at and at the time it was announced, right? We see that the price of Torchlight had plummeted like a brick because of the situation with oil, right? When it was first found in 2019. It was around, Torchlight Energy was around $3.5 a, uh, a share. 
And then, and then because of the situation in 2020 or so, the price dropped significantly, right? And that's to be expected. But then we see that, the, the, that you know, at some point, the price of oil was, was basic, you know, the, pr the price of torchlight had basically dropped down significantly and was floating around the bottom now. Uh, by the end of 2020, it was around, I don't know, what is it, around 55 cents uh, a share or so, right? And the reason we say that is because this is a stock chart of metamaterials. Torchlight became metamaterials, so we're going we're, you know, to take the metamaterials charts because we can't find torchlight charts anywhere. Uh, we can only do the metamaterials charts right now. So we'll do the metamaterials charts and treat it as though they're torchlight. But at the time, in 2020... No one wanted the oil, right? February 26th of 2020, no one wanted oil. Oil was in oil, oil was in the toilet. Nobody cared about oil. And the price was low, okay? That was the situation we, uh, we were in. But, but in 2019, though, oil was not in the toilet at that time, right? At, in 2019, oil was, you know, torchlight, and that oil discovery was worth $3.5 a share. And what happened was shorts drove down that price all the way down towards about a buck twenty-five or so, right? And then we see what happened in 2020, of course, right? The price of oil dropped like crazy, and that you know, you know, that results in nobody wanting torchlight. But it didn't have to be that low, right? I mean, it recovered. The price of oil recovered, but the price of torchlight didn't recover, okay? And um, so at that time, what happened is that I'm saying that the uh, Torchlight guys, they became familiar with what short attacks do, right? What people shorting your company can do. Because way back in time, in 2019, when they first discovered oil, they were around three and a half dollars, you know, a share. But by, you know, by the end of, you know, by the, by before the start of 2020, the, pr the price had been driven down dramatically by shorts. Brand new discovery. And yeah, so so that's what happened. So Torchlight became very familiar with, with, with what shorts can do. So it was in this environment that, that the merger happened, right? The Torchlight guys know about shorts. They're merging with a company called Metamaterials. And they had a plan to make the Series A preferred shares to spin out their oil and gas assets. So they wanted to make the Series A preferred shares non-tradable. And what that means is that if you're a short, you would have to deliver this, uh, these shares that are non-tradable. And because they're non-tradable, you can't get the shares. The only way to get the, these shares is from, you know, is from Metamaterials. Metamaterials hands it out as a dividend to longs. If you own, if you own Torchlight share, I'm sorry. The only way to get these shares is if you were a Torchlight shareholder. If you were a Torchlight shareholder, then you would get the share as a result of the merger. Okay. The shares are non-tradable. They're not, and as a result of that, there's no way for the shorts to get a hold of these shares. And what that would tend to do is that, you know, the shorts would be aware of this, so they'd know that they have to have to exit their position in Torchlight, right? So the Torch shorts would have to exit, or they would be trapped. And um, because of that, you know, you can expect that the price of, 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 um, of Torchlight would go up, right? And that's precisely what happened, right? So, as we see, Torchlight Energy was was shorted like crazy uh, in 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 2019 and in 2020. The shorts continued to drive down the price, and they were helped by the fact that the price of oil was very low. But then, after the merger was announced and all that, and they knew that they'd have to deliver these preferred shares that didn't exist, that there was no way for them to get a hold of, the price started to rise like crazy. Right. The shorts had to close. They had to buy to close their positions. People were really interested in the new technology and and in getting out of the oil business, and 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 getting into into next generation technology. Right, that's what metamaterials uh, represented. So the price went up significantly by February 16 of 2020. The price of 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 metamaterials slash torchlight it got up to a peak of $9.66 and it closed around $8.58. It dropped back down a little bit and then it rose again, right? All the way up until January 21st of 2021 when it hit a peak of $21.76, okay? Let's look at that first rise in price. 
right? That's basically a 20x gain, going from 50 cents almost to $9.66. Almost, you know, 50 cents to $10. That's, all, that's about 20x, right? What about that second rise? That, that was about an 8x gain. It went from $2.70 or so all the way up to $21, right? That's about 8x right there, right then and there. If you count the total gain, it's somewhere around 40x, right? You go from, from $0.55 cents to $21.76. That's, that's a pretty decent rise, right? All from shorts covering, basically. Now, that was the plan. Torchlight and Metamaterials were, get, were about to merge, produce a Series A preferred shares, right? So along, you know, time goes on and, you know, they give updates and, 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 and they give a timeline. So come J June 21st of, of 2021, they made an, an, an announcement. They were about to merge. They were all set. They have all, all, you know, they've been working on it for six months or so. All the paperwork seems to be all set. But, they, but on June 24th, they said, hey, look, you know, we need a, a few more days just to complete the paperwork for the merger because, you know, we're not going to be done by... You know, we're not going to be done by the time frame of, um, of June 24th. It's going to take us probably till the 30th, say, you know, you know, we should, you know, we should be done by no later than June 30th. Okay. The original merger date is June 24th. It's the 21st. We got a lot of paperwork to do. It's going to take a little bit more time. Right. And so they had a press release, you know, told the SEC about this, all that, everything's all set. So, um, so Here's the thing, they announced an extension. The original merger complete date was the 24th, and they, and, um, but they did say that, hey, look, they'll have the Series A preferred shares will be paid out by the 25th. Not a problem. On the 25th, you'll have the new Series A preferred shares if you were a Torchlight shareholder. And by no later than, than June 30th, you'll have, you know, the, the merger will be complete. You'll be, you'll be all set, right? So basically, it just gets moved. Out. So, so the merger complete date basically just gets moved out, right? But the payment date is going to be the 25th. So good to go, right? That's, that's what they're talking about. So that gets announced. And um, on the 25th, we see that, um, you know, we see this announcement come out, okay? June 25th, 2021. It's, and the announcement is basically, we paid out the Series A preferred shares as planned. Right, that's to be expected. Oh, and by the way, the you know, the paperwork for the merger, it's all done. So you can start trading on 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 Monday, June twenty eighth. Right? What? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 basically, you know, we're all done with, you know, with the paperwork a little you know, a few days early. And uh, you can start trading on Monday. So for Torchlight shareholders, right, that's great news, right? You June twenty fifth. You know, you you got your Series A preferred shares. Or, you know, we switch from Torch shares to MMAT shares. We're good, good to go. Right? Sounds great. But what happened to what I said earlier about these shorts getting trapped? Huh? <laughs> well, if the merger the merger completed two days earlier than a bunch of shorts had expected, right? Because they thought it got extended out to the thirtieth from the twenty fourth, but if you look at, you know, the exact wording is the, the new merger complete date is no later than June 30th, 2021. Not it will be on June, June 30th. It's no later than June 30th. So they got done a few, you know, a few days earlier, two days earlier, to be honest, right? And the result of that is quite interesting, right? We see that a bunch of shorts became trapped because they still owed torch shares that they were short on. And torch shares no longer exist. Instead, you've got metamaterials plus a Series A preferred share. If you had a torch share before, you, you now have a metamaterial share and a Series A preferred share. And that Series A preferred share is non-tradable. There's no symbol to trade it, you know. And uh, metamaterials spent no money to, to have it available on any exchange. It was just not tradable. It was not available. So, and interestingly enough, at, by then, right... By June 25th of 2021, the price of oil had kept increasing, and it was $73.72 per barrel. And the 250-day moving average was about $50 a barrel, $52 a barrel almost, right? So 
We see that the Series A preferred share is non-tradable. Uh, the symbol was not registered by Metamaterials. If you were short, you were basically trapped. And the price of oil was rising. And that meant your Series A preferred shares represented an unknown liability. Suppose they sold the rights to the oil when oil was at an all-time high. And in fact, it was going upwards, right? But it, it, it's worse than that because, you know, the Series A preferred shares, they're not available at any price. The only way you can get them is if you were a torch long at the time of the distribution. They're not tradable. They're not trading. So if you were a torch, if you were a torch short at that time, you owed a Series A preferred share that you could not deliver. You were screwed, basically. Okay. And um, it gets worse <laughs> because somewhere along the way. Around May 13th of 2021, there was an interview that George Palacaris, the CEO of Metamaterials, did. It was a, it was a, a, private, um, a private interview with, um, with some Italian investors, and it got uploaded to Google Drive. And um, let's hear a little bit of it. This is just a part. So a partial recording got uploaded. This is a piece of the partial recording. Um, you know, the price of oil from one 12 month period went from negative to being, you know, let's say uh, in a good uh, momentum. Yeah. So the more time that goes by over the next six months, I can tell you that uh, Torchlight management is speaking to the right potential buyers that they're top tier. And frankly, nobody can predict if this is going to be a, a $1 or a $20 dividend. That it's very difficult because buyers have their own different motivations and they'll think about the price differently depending on where we are in the market. You have seen that in the United States, uh, the new president Biden has done some additional restrictions in the oil and gas industry yeah. and that makes an asset or the assets that Torchlight has even more valuable. So if you announce a dividend today, you're shooting yourself in the foot, as they say. I believe that the dividend will be uh, very exciting for the Torchlight shareholders and my hope is that they'll take it and do whatever they want with it and maybe buy some additional MMAT stock on the future on the NASDAQ. That's my hope. And that's why we did not want to touch the dividend because we on the meta side could not even predict the price of oil six months ago or where the this Biden administration would create potentially additional reasons for the assets to be more valuable. And for you, so, if, so the, 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 if to conclude, the, the if conclude the is that it's it's yeah. a preferred share for a reason. It's not priced. And in order for the shorts to deliver this, they have to own the stock. They cannot borrow the stock. They can loan. They cannot short the stock. They have to own the stock to participate in the dividends, and so does any other normal investor. And as a result, because of the potential is, if you look at the statistics, you know it could be a dollar to more than twenty dollars according to the analysis. It's you know it's uh, it's difficult to to predict where it's gonna end up. It's difficult to predict where it's going to end up. There was a lot in that, in uh, in what George Palacara said, and there was a lot there. Okay, <laughs> he also mentioned uh, that hey, gee, you know, if you're, you know, it's my hope that they will do whatever they want with it and maybe buy some additional MMAT stock on the Nasdaq. That's my hope, right? So, if you were short, if you were. Sh 
uh, let's see, let's go back. If you were short, let's see. If you were, sh oh, let's go back here. If you were short, yeah, here it is. If you were short torchlight energy and you shorted from what? Three dollars, three and a half dollars, all the way down to 55 cents. And now you, ha you have to deliver on top of that a $20 dividend. Your $3 short results in you paying out $20 dividends. Jeez, that's that's a nightmare. <laughs> that's that that you know you you lost way more than you can have afforded to uh, you know than you could possibly have made in you know with that move. So that's just uh, that's that's just craziness. So um, you're in you're in a world of hurt at that point, you know. And the fact of the matter is that you know this is uh, this is not something that could be. Um, th this is not something that 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 could have been been predicted, right? So if you're short, what do you do, right? You you know, you have you're in a world of hurt, right? What do you what are you gonna do? Well, the only thing you can do, right? What you're gonna limit your risk on the metamaterial side, and you're gonna try to hope to figure out something for this Series A preferred shares before it's too late, before it gets sold, right? That's the only thing you can hope to do. So what does it mean to limit risk on, on the metamaterial side? It means that you do a short attack, right? Push down the price of metamaterials, push it down as far as you can, hope it gets delisted, right? And, uh, but then something like this happens. <laughs> By September, ConocoPhillips announces that they, uh, that they are spending nine and a half billion dollars to get some land in the Permian Basin <laughs> from Shell. <laughs> Nine and a half billion dollar oil deal. What do you do if you're short? <laughs> That's just horrible, right? I mean, anyway, so your work, so this is your nightmare potential, right? And it, you just missed it. You know, ConocoPhillips went with Shell, nine and a half billion dollars. And, um, but then something interesting happened. This was your backup plan, right? This was something you had a, uh, as a short, you had something going. There was a stock symbol that came that started trading on Thursday of uh, October seventh of twenty twenty one, MMTLP. There was little to no information on what it was, nothing, I right, but I started seeing stuff in social media about it, right, especially on MMAT forums. People were saying, "Do not sell your dividend, not a fi not financial advice." I do not know what's going on. One thing is clear: do not sell your MMTLP. On JP Morgan, I cannot trade it. I think this is a glitch and should not be tradable. This is some black magic hocus pocus crap. If MMTLP is a spin-off company, it shouldn't be tradable before the official announcement. This is this is going to get crazy. So hold on to your shares, right? And you know, we saw that uh, you know it started trading. It got you know it got it, it went from one cent to, to to seventy cents very quickly, right? And we see things like this, you know, on on. Um, on, on Reddit, it says, retail tricked into selling 1.62 million dividend shares yesterday, right? 1.62 million shares got traded. Just before MMTLP shares paid out. Uh, just bought MMTLP shares. Some people were buying. If the dividend pays out, I'll buy a ton of, an, of MMTLP, right? Uh, this was actually by me. <laughs> anyone, else, anyone else planning on doing something similar? So I discovered MMTLP at that time, and I said, hey, I just bought a ton of it. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I bought it. Not financial advice. Not financial advice. <laughs> I don't. I didn't own Torchlight shares before, but and I so I didn't get any preferred shares. But now that MMTLP is trading, I bought some. If this dividend pays out, I'll buy a ton of MMAT. Right? Anyone else planning anything? Anything similar? And um, you know, other people were buying MMTLP, right? And the the price started going up. And. Uh, People were wondering, what is this, right? This is pure, you know, people are saying this is pure speculation. What is it? Is it the Torchlight shares? Okay. And finally, we see something that comes out from Fidelity. And it says, thank you for reaching out. Fidelity, a, a big time broker or a major broker, right? It says, MMTLP represents the preferred shares issued from Metamaterials as a result of the re reverse merger completed with Torchlight Energy. These shares are separate from the common shares of Metamaterials, MMAT. So somehow, MMTLP is the Series A preferred shares, right? 
and we know that to be the case. And as a result, the price started taking off, and it got as high as two fifty. It got as high as the. It actually got as high as three dollars, right? And people are saying, you know, don't sell. And MMTLP was squeezing, and the price was going up. Uh, and um, people are saying, you know, don't sell diamond hands. And some people did sell, right? Who knows? But uh, more brokers allowed trading. By Friday, you could, uh, you, you know, it wasn't just one. You know, it wasn't just one or two brokers that allowed trading. By Friday, more brokers allowed trading. You, you, you know, you could sell some. There was still very little information, and the price closed at a, at a buck ninety. It opened at eighty cents a share on Friday. On Thursday, it opened at a penny a share and went to to over seventy cents a, a share. The peak was about three dollars and twenty cents, and about eleven point two million shares got traded that day. Basically, eleven point two million shares got bought by people. And 11.2 million shares were sold by people, right? So a lot of people were saying, hey, look, don't forget about Overstock. Overstock went to 90, you know. People were, were, were talking about MMTLP and the pink sheets because it wasn't traded normally, right? It was traded on the pink sheets. And, uh, you know, it was, it was an odd thing. It was traded over the counter, OTC, right? There was minimal documentation. And we know that Metamaterials and Torchlight, no one there, uh, filled out any paperwork on trading MMTLP. This was done by somebody else. If we look in, in at the paperwork that was filled out, you know, there were 200, 000, 200 million preferred shares were authorized by Metamaterials and Torchlight, and the preferred share is a dividend of Torchlight, uh, of Torchlight holders, and they were not tradable, right? But then we see this, this message that comes out from Fidelity that says they are tradable, right? So this was a big deal. No one, you know, we weren't expecting this, but it became tradable. I bought some at the time, not knowing what it was, uh, you know, but but thinking on the off chance, it could be, you know, you never know. Might as well just buy some just on the off chance, right? Couldn't hurt. We know also on August 19th that George, Pal George Palacaris made this tweet that said about 160, about 165 million shares of MMTLP were transferred, right, through the transfer agent. And it's, uh, you know, most of it is held in street name. So it wasn't until this point in time in July of 2020, 2022 that Syntax Queen of the Metaverse had this uh, fam chat on Twitter, on Twitter spaces, and John Berta happened to talk. And he, he happened to drop by the fam chat and, and let us know what's going on. And he clarified the situation as much as possible, I think. So let's hear what he has to say. So we'll see what happens. You know, the uh, the MMTLP thing was, uh, you know, a shocker. Caught us all off guard. Um, yes. And, um, you know, that there was a, there were some mistakes made in that deal, um, unbeknownst to anybody, quite frankly, that allowed them to, to trade it. And, uh, you know. But to be fair, I mean, that had never, ever, ever happened before, right? No, no. I, you know, it's two market makers got together on the gray sheets. And the only reason they were allowed to do it is because the uh, one word that was in the preferred, and it said transferable. Oh, wow. That was it. So, um, and I also had a QSIP number. And uh, we also uh, used DTC to distribute it. So it was, you know, they got together and. Went to FINRA, got a ticker, and went to the gray sheets and used information from 2012 when I was the president of the company, not CEO. And it was just, you know, OTC Marcus didn't do anything about it. Nobody did anything about it. They don't care. So. Yeah. I I imagine that that was a frustrating, um, I, I would think maybe a right word, and this is probably bad but i would imagine it was kind of a clusterfuck when they saw that the nmtlp <laughs> was trading like holy well, crap i was getting, I was I know getting smoke phone, calls, I phone calls from my broker and from you know, you know guys that were close to the deal and like are you are you looking at this ticker i said i have no idea what you're talking about i was actually on a trip to nashville when it happened and and uh you know i saw my my 2.2 million shares all of a sudden worth 6.6 .6 million dollars in my account i was like oh okay how the hell did that happen 
you know, so, <laughs> so, um, you know, that's when I, I started to look into it, but, um, yeah, it's the nefar- nefarious shit going on and, um, absolutely. We'll see. Well, I was now the TRCH was still trading in some European markets. I'm sorry. What'd you say? The um, TRCH was still trading in some European yeah, markets, uh, even still. I don't know how much it trades over there, and I don't know that they mark, uh, you know, daily trades or what have you. I have no idea, but um, yeah, it's you know the interesting thing is that my theory is that MMTLP would have never happened had the books been truly really balanced on the dividend day. So the brokerage houses, the prime brokers, and these hedge funds never cleared their position. And so, now they're kind of stuck, right? Yep. And so they've, uh, you know, they, they started trading this so they could get, you know, people to sell their preferred positions that were in their brokerage account so they could clear out their trade. Exactly. So. Because the sooner you, the sooner you get rid of it, they can account for it. That's right. So, and, and it's now, still not, here, let's, I, can, can we, I still don't think it's over to be honest with you. <laughs> Oh, no, I don't think it is. Now, I, I do want to know if we can clear this one thing up um, since we've got you on the line and you're as official as it gets. Um, and I think this has been made public. If you, can't, if you can't answer it, just say no, you can't answer it. Everything was transferable. You just said that. That means anybody who holds the new shares of MMTLP means that get transferred too, right? They get their yep. dividend. Yeah, they get their dividend. Yep. Thank Yay! you very much. I, I needed to hear that. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome, Bird. <laughs> I'm so glad she unmuted to do that. <laughs> do it again, Ted. Do it again. Yay! <laughs> now I've been hiding in office plant mode. I've been just observing in the office plant, <laughs> listening in, listening in, taking notes. And then, yeah, so it's like Smokey asked the million dollar question, and we heard it. Yeah, it's, you know, I've seen that on Twitter a lot for a long time. People were concerned about. You know, if they bought MMTLP when they're get, getting their shares. And I know, um, I think, I thought Ken had mentioned something about it before. So yeah. I didn't really say anything about it. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, there's, I know a lot of guys buying MMTLP. So there you're, you, so there you've heard it, right? You heard it straight from John Berta's mouth. Uh, if you bought MMTLP, you will get the dividend. And uh, that's a good time for a break. So this is the end of part two about some thoughts about oil. Uh, so you heard the story of what happened with Torchlight, Metamaterials, and Metamaterials Preferred Shares. Now, part three, we'll be talking a bit more about MMTLP. What's it worth? What's going to happen? Is it going to be public? Is it going to be private? Uh, it, you know, how's that, you know, what's what's going forward so um so this is a good point uh so this is a good time to end let me end by saying that i'm not a financial advisor this is not financial advice this information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only goodbye